Welcome to Electron Online, and if you've seen the previous three videos, you should be ready for this one. All right, so in the previous one, we saw what we had to do when one of the two mirrors was angled forward or backwards, and how we adjusted for that through the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Well, here we have a situation where we have three mirrors, mirror one, mirror two, mirror three, and none of them are either horizontal or vertical, with a ray coming in at 45 degree, uh, degree angle with the horizontal line. What will be ultimately the direction of the reflected beam after reflected off of the three mirrors? And I'm hoping I drew this correctly so that it will actually reflect off the three mirrors. So let's find out. Okay, how do we do that? Well, the first thing I always do is draw the normal, and maybe I should draw that in a different color so it might be a little bit easier to see. So here is the normal to the mirror. And so we have to find the angle of incidence to the normal. So let's see then. Um, we have a 45 degree angle here. What is this angle right here? Well, let's come over here and notice that the mirror is angled 20 degrees below the horizontal, right? If this is 70 degree angle, then it's 20 degrees below the horizontal, which means that this must be a 20 degree angle. So this must be a 20 degree angle. And 20 plus 45 is 65. If you subtract 65 from 90, you're left with 25. So this must be a 25 degree angle angle of incidence to the mirror, which means that the reflected beam will have an angle of reflection of 25 degrees relative uh, to, the, um, to the normal. If the normal is, is angled at 20 degrees past the vertical, 25 degrees would be slightly to the left of vertical, so that means that our beam would go in this direction as it's reflected out of the first mirror. There we go, so this must be 25 degrees, and uh, which means that uh, the angle over here must be, uh, let's see, 90 minus 25, which would be 65 degrees for this angle right there. Now, why do I need this angle? Well, my next quest is to find the angle of incidence on this mirror. And again, angle of incidence would be the angle relative to the normal to that mirror. So we're trying to find out what this angle is right here. Okay, so that would be angle of incidence. To find that angle, we need to find these other three angles because we know that once we find this angle, it's easy to find that angle. And we know that the angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. All right, now let's find out what this angle is here. We know that from there to there should be 180 degrees. And if we subtract these other two angles from it, because this mirror is angled at 30 degrees relative to the vertical, then this angle should be 180 minus 70 minus 30. Well, 30 plus 70 is 100, so 180 minus 100 is 80 degrees. So this angle is 80 degrees. That angle is 65 degrees, which means that this angle right here must be, let's see here, that would be 180 minus 80 degrees minus 65 degrees. So 180 minus 80 is 100, minus 65 is 35 degrees, which means this is a 35 degree angle. All right, and since we know that this line here is normal or perpendicular to the mirror, that means that this must be a 90 degree angle. 90 minus 35 is 55 degrees. So that must be a 55 degree angle of incidence, which means that the reflected beam will also be leaving at a 55 degree angle relative to the, uh, to the normal. So this must be a 55 degree angle. All right. Now we need to find out what the angle of incidence is on the third mirror, which means we need to find out what the angle is relative to this normal right there. Not quite straight, but good enough. All right, so we need to find out what this angle is right here. Okay, how do we find that out? Well, we can do that by finding the other three angles right there. Don't have a lot of room there, so I'll write small, but let's find out what they are. Well, first of all, this angle is a 90 degree angle. We know that this is 55, 90 minus 55 should be 35, so this is a 35 degree angle right there. 35 degree, I hope you can read that on the camera there. Okay, so now we need to find out what this angle is. All right, let's, let's see if we can do that. We know that this here is a 30 degree angle, so that means if this is 30 degrees, that means that this here must be, if I draw an angle like this, let's see here, let's draw a triangle. Sometimes it's easier to see when we draw triangles. So this is 30, this is 90, that means this must be a 60 degree angle. So this is 60 degrees, this is 90 degrees, and this is 80 degrees. And you know that when you go all the way around, that should be 
360 degrees. So we can figure out what this angle is here. So just simply by drawing this triangle, knowing that this was 30, we know that this is 60, this is 90. So when we know that this is 60, we know this is 90, and we know that that's 80, we can figure out the fourth angle. So 360 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 80 degrees and minus 60 degrees, what do we get? Okay, that would be 270, uh, that would be 190, that would be 130, that's a 130 degree angle right over there. 130 degree angle right there. Okay, so we know that the sum of these three angles must add up to 180, so we take 180 degrees minus 130 degrees minus 35 degrees, that would be 50 minus 35, which is 15 degrees. That means that this angle here must be 15 degrees. And now we know that this is the angle of incidence, which would be 90 minus 15, or 75 degrees, which means that the angle of reflection must also be 75 degrees. This must be 75 degrees. And finally, how do we find the final direction of that, of that uh, particular, um, particular beam? All right, so notice that this is angled at 80 degrees relative to the vertical, which means that this mirror is at an angle of 10 degrees relative to the horizontal. And we know that this angle is 75, this is 10, that means the difference between those two must be a five degree angle, which means that the final beam, the reflected final beam, is uh, five degrees below the horizontal. Wow, okay, so quick review. Again, always you have to find the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. So first of all, we get a 45 degree angle between the beam and the horizontal. We know the angle of the mirrors is 20 degrees below the horizontal, so the sum of these two is 65. 65 plus 25 gives you 90, so we know this is 25. This must be 25 since the mirror is angled 20 degrees below the horizontal. That means that this must be angled 5 degrees over this way relative to the vertical. Okay. That's not that important, just for, for information. So we know that this is 25 degrees, that means this must be 65 degrees. Based upon the angles over here, we know that the mirror here is angled 70, uh, 20 degrees below the horizontal, and this is 30 degrees this way, so we know the angle between them must be 80, because 180 minus 70 minus 30 is 80. Once we know this angle and this angle, we can figure out that angle. That means we know the angle of incidence here, the angle of reflection. Now the last part is a little bit more difficult, what is the angle of incidence over there? So we need to know what this angle is, so we need to figure out what these other two angles are. All right, how do we do that? Well, this one is relatively easy because the angle of reflection is 55 degrees, so 55 plus 35 is 90, so that's fairly easy to get. The second angle, a little bit more, a little bit harder right here, but we can do that by drawing this triangle, knowing that this is 30, that then this must be 60 because this is 90. If this is 60 and this is 90, and we know that this was given as an 80 degree angle, so a total 360 degrees minus 90 minus 80 minus 60 gives me 130. If I add those up, that's 165 plus 15 is 180, so we know that this is 15 degrees, and finally we know that this must be 75 degrees. That means this angle of reflection must be 75, which is 15 degrees away from, from, the, uh, from the mirror. And we know that the mirror is tilted 10 degrees upward, so this is 10 degrees, that's 75. So that means that the final beam must be 5 degrees below the horizontal. And so it doesn't matter how many mirrors and what their angles, of, uh, what their angles are or what their orientations are, by simply following this technique, you should be able to work your way through any angle combination of any mirror set. And that's how we do that.